And breaking news from the UK, where a court has ruled that the government broke the law by allowing arms exports to Saudi Arabia that might have been used in Yemen's war. The court's decision does not mean the UK must immediately halt arms exports to Saudi Arabia. Now, the UK has licensed nearly $6 billion worth of arms sales to Saudi Arabia since it began bombing Yemen in 2015. That includes more than $3.5 billion in licenses that cover military air aircraft like the typhoon and tornado, which are central to the Saudi-led coalition's campaign in Yemen. And around $2.4 billion worth of licenses in precision-guided bombs and missiles. Activists say bombs like the Paveway 4 have been used against civilian targets. Between 2013 and 2017, the UK accounted for 23 percent of Saudi Arabia's arms exports. Well, let's speak about this to Andrew Smith, who is the media coordinator for the campaign against arms trade. He's outside the court, and uh, your uh, uh, a company actually uh, led uh, the, this uh, uh, um, ruling, was behind uh, this challenge. I imagine this is a decision by the Court of Appeal that you welcome. What did the judges base their decision on? Well, we certainly welcome the judgment, but it should never have taken a four-year legal process brought on by campaigners to make the government follow its own arms export controls. Because in that time, tens of thousands of people have been killed in the worst humanitarian crisis in the world, and UK-made weapons have played a central role in that crisis. The UK-made fighter jets and the UK-made bombs have had a devastating impact on Yemen. The case which we put to the Court of Appeal was a very strong one. The Court of Appeal has come down very strongly on our favour and has set a vitally important precedent. But, Andrew, as one of the judges said, the decision of the court today does not mean that the licences to export arms to Saudi Arabia must be immediately suspended. So how are you going to convince the UK government to reconsider that matter? The UK government, as a result of this judgment, the UK government has to do a review into how UK arms have been used and to take a view on if Saudi forces have violated international humanitarian law in their devastating war on Yemen. The main result from today is that there can't be any new licences awarded going forward while that process is happening. But this isn't just a legal question, it's also a political one. And we have to make sure that this judgment is not cast to one side. There has to be as much political pressure on the government to act as possible. The court has done its job today. It's time for the government to do its. The latest figures show that the death toll in Yemen's war is fast approaching 100,000. Uh, you say that the UK government bears responsibility in this, but uh, what about the other countries uh, that also sell weapons to Saudi Arabia? And they're not just selling weapons to the Saudi coalition, they're also training personnel in, in Yemen's war. Oh, absolutely. The arms industry is a global industry and its impacts are global and therefore the resistance to it has to be global as well. We have seen more pressure all across Europe and we have seen more pressure in the US as well with Congress and Senate taking a strong line against the US arms sales. We don't just want to see arms sales stopped in the UK, we want to see arms sales stopped from all the major arms export providers. But the weapons which the UK has been selling have played such a central role in the bombardment. They are the fighter jets which are dropping the bombs. They are the bombs which are being dropped. They are playing a key role in creating the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. It is a humanitarian crisis which the UK government has been utterly complicit in from day one. Uh, and, Andrew, we've just had reaction from the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. Uh, she's saying that uh, we are disappointed with uh, the court judgment on the Saudi arms exports and that uh, the British government is seeking permission to appeal the judgment. What is your reaction to that? Oh, well, the UK government has every right to try to appeal the judgment, but we believe that the case we presented was a very strong one, and that is why the Court of Appeal has found in our favour. But ultimately, the question for Theresa May is if tens of thousands of people being killed in Yemen is not enough, if the murder of Jamal Khashoggi is not enough, if the 
decades of repression of Saudi people is not enough, then how much worse does the situation have to get before she would say that it's time to stop the arms sales? Theresa May has played an utterly shameful role, but she has played the same role as her predecessors, because this is not an issue about one party or one particular government minister. This has been an institutional policy for decades, which has been followed by governments of all political colours. It's not just a time to end the arms sales, it's time to end the mindset which has allowed these arms sales to continue for so long. Andrew Smith from the Campaign Against Arms Trade, thank you very much for joining us uh, from London.